So in this video, I am doing part three, which is going to be talking about mutations that result in disease. Um, in the previous one, I talked about mutations that result in no change happening. So if you want to make, if you want to know how that happens, check out part two. But for this video, we're going to see how these mutations result in, in how how these mutations can result in diseases. But specifically, we need to we're going to look at this one in, uh, highlighted here in green, sickle cell anemia. So this is the one that you have to know for the IB. All of these right here, like Marfan syndrome, albinism, they all happen through a similar mechanism, but you only need to know about sickle cell anemia, which maybe doesn't look bad compared to all of these, but the effects that this disease has is much greater and actually pretty scary. So let's, let's get into it. So again, part two, I talked about this stuff. I talked about the neutral mutation or the silent mutation, but now we're going to be focusing on disease. So here we are. So what, first of all, just to make all this make sense, what is sickle cell anemia? What is the disease? So in basic terms, sickle cell anemia is a blood disease. So you know that your blood is basically um, inside all of your arteries and veins and all those things, and they carry important nutrients. Specifically, the most important one is oxygen and carbon dioxide, right? Because it makes sure that all your cells get the oxygen they need to be able to carry out various activities and that all the bad things like carbon dioxide are removed from your body. So that's what your blood cells are. That's what they do. And sickle cell anemia is basically a disease that happens to your blood cells. It causes your blood cells to not function properly anymore. And this Maybe it won't show on your face or anything like that, but this this disease is going to have a very bad impact inside your body, which can cause you to have big problems and even death, right? So let's look at it. So for example here, under normal conditions, so this is a blood cell. You can see typically it's like this biconcave shape, like a disc shape, right? It's not, not like, um, it's pretty unique. It's a pretty unique structure of a cell. And you can see here they are in an artery or a vein or whatever, and they're floating around carrying oxygen, similar to this guy right here. They can carry oxygen really good. Okay, this is what your blood cells are supposed to look like. When sickle cell anemia happens, what happens is your blood cells become this weird shape, this sickle shape. So sickle is this structure. It's like a half C. That's a sickle shape. So anemia, by the way, um, is a word that means loss of blood cells or loss in the function of your blood cells so sickle cell anemia is a disease in which the blood cells turn sickle shape which causes them to loss to have a loss in function of the normal blood cells and also a loss in the blood cells which means you can't carry oxygen effectively like this guy so instead of being able to carry a full bag of oxygen you can only carry a single oxygen this is pretty much what sickle cell anemia is but unfortunately for the ib you this is not all you got to know. You got to know how it happens. How does this even, how is this even possible in your body? So you need to know this. Um, you need to know that this happens through a base substitution mutation. Like I said in my previous video, a base. Remember, um, the reason why everything in your body works the way it does is because your DNA has all these letters, right? These letters are called bases. And depending on the order of these letters, that will result, depending on their order, they will result in a specific action or a specific function or feature. So if this order ch gets changed, then this function or the specific trait might be altered, and so the function might not be proper anymore, like this case. You can think of it similar, similarly to a book. A book makes sense because all the words are spelled correctly and in the right order. If you suddenly were to change that order or that spelling of the words now it wouldn't make sense the book wouldn't make sense anymore so your dna works the same way you want to make sure everything is in the right order so base substitution mutation is when one of these letters of your dna are substituted so changed for another one so mutation mutation means to become something different so it's when your dna becomes something different by changing one of the letters now how specifically does this happen and why does that matter so to get to that let me introduce something so inside, don't get confused by this image, don't worry, it's very, very simple. So inside your blood cells, the most important thing is something called hemoglobin. It is a protein. 
Now, what do proteins do? Proteins are things that make other things happen. It's something that allows the cell to do its primary function. So hemoglobin, this specific uh, protein, so heme means blood, by the way. So hemoglobin, so you can see it's related to blood. So hemoglobin, its function is to carry oxygen. So I remember before I said these cells are made to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now, what makes that possible is this protein, hemoglobin. So each red blood cells has a lot of these hemoglobins, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of them. And they are going to basically capture these oxygens and carbon dioxides and move them around in your body. So let's look at this diagram. So here we can see it's like a vein or artery and it was kind of cut open. So you can see what's going on inside. And you can see all of these blood cells, right? So here it is. Now, this structure right here, they're basically showing you that inside this blood, this blood cell, we can see various ones of these. This looks like a crazy complicated thing. But all this is, is hemoglobin. So this is the protein. So remember, proteins are made during transcription and translation. And so, um, if, your, if your code is correct from your DNA, it will make the right protein. But if your code is incorrect due to a base substitution mutation, you will get the wrong protein. So you'll get the wrong hemoglobin. And... And basically, you can see that a normal hemoglobin has four chains. So these chains are individual polypeptides. And when they're put together, they make a protein. And these polypeptides are made, like I said, during transcription and translation by linking together many amino acids. So we know, make sure that you know that proteins are basically formed by many little circles, amino acids, joined together by peptide bonds. And when they're all joined together, they'll form this long chain and when these long chains are put together, they form this protein, okay? And this, and under normal circumstances, hemoglobin has four chains. Two alpha chains, as you can see, alpha, alpha, and two beta, okay? Now, bear in mind, it isn't really these colors. These colors are just here to make it clear, to see, easy to see. But the important thing is, in, the, in sickle cell anemia, the hemoglobin isn't normal. So the code that makes hemoglobin has been changed by base substitution mutation, and this mutation results in a faulty hemoglobin. During in sickle cell anemia, the hemoglobin will be missing, will have a problem in its B chains, its beta chains. So the beta chains, these, the green one and this red one, um, will have a big problem, and so they won't be able to carry oxygen anymore. So that change, that substitution, causes them to not work anymore. They're not made properly. And so your hemoglobin... Only the alpha change work, and so they can't carry oxygen properly anymore. Only half of it works. So that's basically the problem during the substitution. So the beta chains don't work. Only the alpha chains remain. So this way you can see the, ca the oxygen-carrying protein of red blood cells get altered so that the beta chains don't work anymore, and so only the alpha chains can carry oxygen, and so the overall capacity of your body to carry oxygen is altered and so that is what the disease is sickle cell anemia but still unfortunately you need to know a little bit more so what we are going to look at now is specifically how this happens so i told you what happens that causes this disease now specifically what mutation where where and what mutation occurs that causes this to happen so it's very simple don't worry just keep with it keep with it keep keep with me so here we go same stuff. Here is the sickle cell that's not able to carry oxygen, representing the sickle cell anemia. Now, how does it happen? So remember, like I said, your body has this code, this DNA, right? Now, the DNA has specific sections to it called genes. So, for example, if this is your DNA, this could be a specific gene, this yellow part. This gene, let's pretend for now that this gene is the gene that is going to make this protein that I was talking about before, this hemoglobin protein, okay? It's the code. It's the instructions to make this protein, okay? So under normal circumstances, we know to turn this code into a protein, we need to undergo transcription and translation. So if you don't know what those are, what transcription and translation is, I really encourage you to watch this video that I made. Um, using the Bob the Builder analogy. It makes a lot of sense, so I recommend you to, see, to check that one out. Because for now, I'll go over very, very briefly, so you might not understand it. So now let's take this specific gene. So this gene is going to make this hemoglobin protein. So let's take it. 
And what we're going to do, what your body is going to do is it's going to separate the strands. So transcription, so the first part of turning it into a protein, is first it needs to go fetch that gene, because right now it's stuck in DNA. So what it's going to do is your body is going to undergo transcription to go copy that gene. Um, so let's pretend this is the DNA. So your DNA has a long code, this gene. So I'm only focusing on the small part that's going to have a problem, okay? So pretend the X is, is basically a super long chain that everything that works. So the X is not really a, is not really a base. It's not a real base. There's only A, C, T, and G. So pretend I'm putting these X's here to show you that it's continuous. The DNA is pretty long, the specific gene. But we're only going to focus on this one codon, this one code. Okay, so say we have DNA. We fetched this code. It's pretty long, but I only, I'm only showing you a part of it. And to turn that, and now we have to turn that into mRNA, the messenger RNA, because the messenger RNA is basically the specific gene that we want copied from the DNA. So it's, it's a specific gene that we want copied from the DNA. So here we form it. So remember, now we formed mRNA from the dRNA. You can see the, sh the G bind with the C, the A with the T, the G with the C, and so on. And now that this mRNA is formed, it will leave the nucleus, okay? Once it leaves the nucleus, it's going to go into the cytoplasm. So we now, now what we have is the code for hemoglobin. Now, obviously though, for example, if you have an instruction manual, so this is basically the instruction manual, the protein, or if you have an instruction manual for a house or a cupboard, the cupboard can build itself just with the instruction manual. You need tools and materials and all that stuff. So that's true in your DNA as well. So say we have the code here. Now we need a bunch of um, raw materials and tools to build this protein. And that happens in translation in your cytoplasm. So I'm not going to go over the specific tools you need because that I covered in transcription and translation. But now we... What specifically is going to happen is this code is now going to call for the amino acids. Remember, I said amino acids put together will make this protein, this all these chains, all these millions of amino acids put together will make this protein. So I'm only showing you again, only showing the, the part that goes wrong. But right now, this is the correct DNA. So I'm showing you what happens when it's correct. And I'm going to show you below what happens when it goes wrong. So now in the correct version of making this protein, one of the codes is GAG and then XXXXXXX forever and forever. So what is GAG going to code for? What specific amino acids? So to find that out, we use this table. So we're going to go first base. So this is a base, remember? And this is a second base, and that's third base. Because in DNA, just like in English, we have words of various lengths. So we have some words that are 12 letters long, some that are 5 letters, letters long. In DNA, all the words, all the codes are 3 letters long. Okay, so this would be one code. The next three X's will be another code. The next three, another code, and so on. So what is this one code for? So we go first base, G. So we know it's going to be in this row. Now we go for A, the second base. So we know it's going to be in this area, G and A, here. And now G, where's GAG? Here we have it, GAG. So the specific amino acid that, that that one codes for is glutamic acid. So let's get it. Glutamic acid. And that's going to bind to the next one, which is XXX, whatever. This isn't a real thing. I'm just showing it so it continues to go on. So this is the correct one, by the way. So your body is happy. You have normal, you have normal glucose, um, normal, normal cells if this happens. But what happens when it goes wrong? So we need to see this. So here is an example of what happens when it goes wrong. So what happens when it goes wrong is in your DNA, instead of having this code, CTC, XXX, whatever, forever, it's going to have CAC, XXX, X, and so on. So what mRNA is this going to make during transcription? So this is going to make this mRNA. Do you see? It's slightly different. There's one different thing. Instead of having GAG, it has now GUG. Now what is GUG going to code for, do you think? Let's check. G, U, G. Here it is. G, U, G. Valine. You can see it's a different amino acid. Here we have it. Valine. So it's going to have valine. Let's bring this down. So we're going to have valine. The same code for the rest of the way, just one change.
the one so everything is going to be the same about that protein except one amino acid so the, the faulty form the problem form will have will have the hemoglobin protein with a valine and the correct form will have the hemoglobin protein with a glutamine so you can see one single change so then your body is going to be unhappy because now you have the wrong cells you have these sickle cell shapes and now you can't carry oxygen properly anymore and this can re result in major problems of your body because your body needs oxygen so bad why do you think we breathe for oxygen so that's my point so you can see the sickle cell anemia is really really quite simple it's simple this disease results when your DNA is not how it's supposed to be this is how it's supposed to be for that for the hemoglobin protein but if it's not how it's supposed to be for example like this it's gonna make a different protein so it's gonna make um, a hemoglobin protein in which the beta chains don't work they're not correct so they can't carry oxygen properly anymore whereas in the correct one it can therefore you have this problem you have this sickle cell anemia okay so I hope this made sense just it's a simple, simple, simple substitution mutation where just one of the amino acids are different than the other ones, and so your final protein, hemoglobin, causes uh, faulty beta chains, which means that your hemo, which means that this hemoglobin only half of it works, the alpha chains, and so you can't carry oxygen properly anymore. So I hope that makes sense.